Hola amigos, this is level 12 and today we are going to be talking about problems with B-Stars. Now, I just want to say I love this anime. I gave it a 9 out of 10 on my anime list. I loved the show. And what I want to do before, what I like to do before I start saying the things I dislike about something, I always like to say the things I liked because you're not giving it its day in court if you don't say something nice about it in my opinion because Obviously, if I watched all of it and I gave it a 9, I didn't hate it. So, I love the story. Like, it, I loved it so much, I may even pick up the manga. Like, that's so rare for me. I don't even read the manga for Hitalia. Like, let me tell you this. The characters, I loved the characters' personalities. I loved how certain characters were, like, played up based on their animal tropes. Like, Haru was a rabbit, you know, multiplying, like, rabbits, you know, you know, you know, you know. Uh, the hen was so proud about her eggs, like, that's a, that's a very hen thing. I, I just loved the characters and how they acted. The world building was really good. Now, I'm gonna make a full video dedicated to comparing this anime to Zootopia, but the world building in this anime felt so much better than Zootopia, and then part of Zootopia's entire thing was the history of Prey versus Predator. I loved the world building. The music was really good, too. I loved it. That opening, though, that opening hit different. Like, I loved the stop-motion animation of the opening theme. Like, there are probably other anime that have done that, but none are coming to mind right now, you know? And the unapologetic adult themes in this anime. We got the gore. We got the cannibalism. We got the nudity. We got it all in this show, and let me tell you, I loved it. Because it looks so innocent, and then, like, the end of the first episode hits you. The end of the, 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 end of the first, the end of the second episode, the end of the series just hits you, and it's like, wham! And you're just like, whoa, so blown away. Loved it. Loved this show and its message. It was great. But the character designs. So, I had such a pr something that kept on like kicking me out of this anime's world were the character designs because we have characters like Haru and this ant eater that look realistic. And I'm gonna use the word realistic here because I obviously they're not like you know oil paintings where it looks like you know you could touch it and you would feel the fur, but it looks realistic for anime standards but then you have characters like juno and legushi that yes they have like the muzzle and the ears and the snout and the fur and all that but they don't look as realistic as like haru the anteater the horse doesn't even look as realistic as haru and the anteater and it's just like it's weird to see that difference and like Juno, her eyes are so, like, expressive and anime-ish. And then we have characters like the Anteater and Haru who have very small, very, in my opinion, animalistic eyes. Well, Juno has very typical anime eyes. And then Legoshi is in a league of his own where he has really small pupils and a lot of, you know, white space where his pupils can, like, do a lot of animation, a lot of movement. And it's just, it's so weird to see these different, like, character designs. And granted, one can say, oh, it's the difference between the species and, you know, that's a thing of the anime. But we have these two hens here who we have one that looks super, like, farm animalist. Like, the, the one further back, the one with the smaller eyes, looks like a lot more realistic than the hen in the foreground where you can see her eyes aren't beady little pupils they're more like legushis where the pupil is very small and there's a lot of white space around it and even their fur looks different now granted you can be like oh that's because the one closer is closer to the camera so you're going to be able to see more detail but i feel like and yes it's a secondary character but it's just it's when i saw this scene i'm like now th they they are just vibing right now like this was a filler scene not gonna lie i knew it was filler i can spot filler from a mile away i've watched enough anime <laughs> and sat through enough naruto to pick out that filler and yeah you can be like oh it's she's just a background character but i'm like in your filler at least like try to make some sense i was like this scene and it's like this was an important episode towards the end not gonna lie this scene just kicked me out of the anime and I took a picture of it. Like, this isn't my picture. Um, 
it wouldn't work to pull it up on the slides, but you can see, like, these characters do not look like they're from the same universe. Like, one is more anthro than the other, and this this show, by the way, do not look up levels of furry or levels of anthro. <laughs> Just don't. There's, like, levels of anthro that you can go through with your character. You can go, like, full, like, spice and wolf, like, neko girl, like, level one. Or you can go for full, like, animal, like, aristocrats. Or aristocats. Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> Let's pick that one because I can say that one. Lady and the Tramp, 101 Dalmatian. You can go for full animal. And then in between are the levels of anthro. Now, at two, you got your mm, kind of furry. At three you definitely have a furry and then at four you have kind of pokemon in a way i would say like four is that weird pokemon level or animal crossing level of character design but two and three definitely are in that weird furry realm but this show straddles its characters or like places its characters somewhere between two three and four like you have characters like Haru, who's somewhere between a three and a four, and characters like Legoshi and Juno that are most definitely a two or a three. And then you have super secondary characters. Like, there was this scene where it showed, like, small rodent animals. And let me tell you, they looked like four if four were to wear clothes. And I know part of four's existence is to not wear clothes because they're more closer to the animal side, but still... And it's so weird that this show, like, goes between the levels. It's strange. Now, I guess because 2 has, like, hair that's different than the color of her fur, then, like, maybe the show only has 3 and 2 because these characters don't really have hair. Like, we have hair. They have fur, but they don't have hair hair. And I don't know. For me, the show just straddled the levels too much. Like, they didn't pick a specific level. And you don't have to stay in a specific level. You can have characters that are, like, four and fives or ones and twos but you can't have them span two three and four and then have some characters in between two and three leaning more to two and in between three and four leaning more to four because then your characters don't look like they're from the same universe or if they are then like you're questioning wait why does this character look like that and the, it's it's strange and i wish they would like pick a definite level of anthro and like um, standardize it across all their characters, and granted, secondary and background characters can look, you know, just a little bit easier to draw, because we don't really care about those, it's, it's background, it's filler, it doesn't matter, but, you know, just, it, it's something that bothered me about this anime, it doesn't detract from it, granted, because the story is so good. Although, I forgot to put in there, but the voice acting, like, I looked up these voice actors for this show, and none of them have done, like, super big gigs, but let me tell you, this show, amazing. The voice cast was so good. I loved it. Now, next is the animation, and it's more the lip sync I have. Now, Beastars is a 3D animated show, which means it uses 3D models, when, in theory, it should be easier to, like, animate and manipulate versus, like, 2D and hand-drawn computer animation. And, like, yeah, we had some really cool fight scenes and stuff, but because of the different level of anthro between the characters, movements were weird sometimes. Like, some characters would move like just regular humans, and then some characters I felt were restricted by their animal class. Like, the, there was an eagle, I think his name was Oba. He, he, he like, walked down differently than the other characters and it could just because he was a, an avian a bird but i don't know it's just it was strange the biggest problem i had was when the characters would talk now granted the show was originally in japanese and i watched the english dub of it and it could just be netflix not knowing how to dub anime but that's neither here nor there but sometimes the characters would talk but because like they wanted to have a more realistic kind of character like, animal-wise, their mouths weren't going to make the same sounds ours were. Their mouths would open and close like sock puppets, like animatronics. And it would be very strange, and, like, the lip movement sometimes also wouldn't sync up with the dialogue. Like, a character would be saying certain words where you know the mouth should be open on certain syllables, and it just wasn't, and it was strange. And it was- <laughs> I hated looking at the characters' mouths whenever characters talked, because- um, 
Let me tell you, strange. And listen, I've watched anime like Italia where I do not like the English dub, but at least, like, the lip, the flaps opening and closing worked. And granted, again, it's because of the level of anthro their characters are at, depending on how much mouth movement you can have. Like Haru, it's easier to manipulate her face because it's just a hole. You can open and close it, widen it, stretch it. But for characters like Legoshi and Juno who have a snout and have a mouth that comes outward, the most you can do is open and close it like a sock puppet. It's it was weird and annoying and again they should have just like found some nice level of anthro to standardize all their characters and that made animation look not weird. <laughs> The final problem I have is my favorite character, Haru. She looks in the face, from the neck up, extremely realistic for a rabbit. The other Harlequin rabbit in the show, the other two rabbits that we see in this show, the two Harlequin ones, they looked more anime than she did. And it was so weird to see the female Harlequin rabbit next to Haru because like, they're the same, like, they're the same, like, species! They're both rabbits! Why, why do they look so weird next to each other? Like, the female Harlequin rabbit had, like, anime eyes and, like, was so much more expressive, and Haru just looks so plain and so realistic. Whenever her hands were on screen, it was so weird. And then, like, you know, the nudity scenes were very weird because she, in the face, it looks like a rabbit. And it's just it's strange. I don't, I don't fully get it. I don't, I don't. And like, that makes me sad because I love Haru. I love her character. I love her voice actor. I love how she reacts to things. She's just a great character with a very strange design that only furries could love. Like her head compared to her hips is such a weird ratio now that I'm looking at it. It's so weird. Like Juno has a normal looking head to shoulders to hip ratio. Haru does not. And also another thing that bo bothers me about Haru is her eyes. They look like such rabbit eyes that it's so hard to like get an expression out of because one of the two, there's like a couple things with the face you can get expressions out of. The eyes, the eyebrows, and the mouth. And with Haru, all you have to manipulate is the eyebrows and the mouth. And granted, in this little screen, uh, this little panel I have here, you can see Haru's face is changing. So you can get emotion out of it. It's not hard. It's just... It's strange, and it's weird, and it's... You have to do a little bit more manipulation, and Haru's design is just so odd to me. I don't fully get it, but again, she is one of my favorite... She is my favorite character. She's my child. Love Haru. But it's just... <laughs> I feel like Haru's character design got done dirty because in the face... She's so realistic looking. And then below, we have, like, a normal human girl. <laughs> it's so strange. Um, I don't fully get it, but okay, Beastars. So that's the problems I have with Beastars. Again, I love this show. I'm going to pick up the manga because I cannot wait for season two. That cliffhanger ending that I thought the show would get to in season one didn't. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, really, uh, I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. It's, like, so good. <laughs> Just these are, these are some minor problems that I have because I'm picky. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more random fandom things. Ciao, chicos.